Bethlehem is being used and the feet is being used and you heard bone crashing against concrete and you heard bones breaking and you see no mercy, you be like, oh man, you be like the dude Macaulay Culkin of a home alone. You know what I'm saying? You be like, and you be like, you don't want no parts of that. But you have no choice because you in it and you can't get out of it until they open the doors, man. It ain't no way out. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no way out, man. The bank is special. Yeah, pure deliciousness. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me, and that really, that's that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. I appreciate the love. Wow, wow, wow. Mom, 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 mom. I appreciate the support, man. I appreciate it. Big love, big love to everybody out there on TBP Nation, man. Salute, salute, salute. We out here. We 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 trying to get it. We trying to get it, man. We out here every day trying to get it. Trying to get this message out there, man. I appreciate everybody who's helping me do so. I appreciate everybody who's rocking with me. Uh, hope y'all come over to the uh, Twitch and get with us at nighttime, man. We just be chopping it up, just talking that talk. And y'all know we in that morning mud, man. We in that morning mud, cutting up. Mispronouncing names, <laughs> handles, or whatnot, you know, but it is what it is, man. But the whole object of that is to start your day off on a positive note, man. And um, hopefully at nighttime in Twitch, man, you can end it on a positive note, man. No matter what happens in between, we just trying to create that positive energy, man, and um, let that energy, you know, flow throughout the day, man. So shout out to everybody who been rocking with me, man. Oh, like I said, if you get if you got that membership, man, big love to you. I'm gonna try to post a video up soon on this membership. Just trying to get all of the uh, you know, all of the things in order, and we'll take off on there, man. And we ain't gonna stop, man. I already went live on there one time, although I ain't had nothing but a couple of people on there. Shout out to y'all. Y'all know who y'all are. Clayface Jones was the first one in there. Big salute to you. Um, big salute to Sassy and everybody else that tapped in on that joint. So, stay tuned, man. We're going to tell some uh, untold stories over there. And we're going to tell some behind the scenes of some of the stories I didn't already told. So, y'all tap in, man, with that membership, man. The price will be going down real soon. So, get it while it's hot. I appreciate everybody who support me, man. Everybody who support the movement. Oh, uh, Man, you know, I was talking to my homeboys, y'all know I had them on, what, the morning mud? I had them on the morning mud the other day, so it just um, put me in the frame of mind, man, to speak about what I want to speak on, because that's what, you know what I'm saying, we was talking about, man, just, you know, how the conditions is in there, man, and what, what dudes is going through, and, you know, like I said, a lot of times, man, the public don't have a... They don't have a clue of what's going on in prison, man. They get all of this false narratives with the movies and, you know, the little TV series and all of this type of stuff, man. And that stuff so far from the truth, man, it don't even make no sense. You know what I'm saying? Them people who making these movies and making the stuff, they probably ain't never been in prison a day in their life. You understand me? So they doing this for entertainment factor. And um, it, 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 it's not entertaining in prison. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact, man. And what they got going on there now is just it's more of the same, man, from when I first came in. You know, it's just like out here in life, man. You have certain things going on, and then it'll fade away. It'll be in, in fashion. Then it'll come back. And that's how life is. It's universal, man. It's going to keep coming back around. And a lot of things that's starting to happen now because of the prison's conditions and stuff, it's more like prison is going back to the way it was when I first came in. You know what I'm saying? In between, it got watered down some, and you know because you got different people coming in. But now it's getting back like it was, man. It's, it, you know, from what I'm being told from these dudes, it's calling home. Prison is is you know getting back to that viciousness, man. Even more so, you know, it's always been vicious and it's always gonna be violence in there. But sometimes that stuff, man. You know, they built all these super maxes to send you up here to all these super maxes to try to curb the violence. More so for them than for us because they ain't want them dudes getting to the point where they feel like, well, you know, 
you, you, I, I'm going to crash out. I, I, I get COs too. You know what I'm saying? They don't want you to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? Because now their, their life is in jeopardy. Now their health is in jeopardy. So they don't want you to get to that point. So that's why they come up with all these supermaxes to try to calm dudes down. But, um, man, this going back to, 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 to the old days, man, because talking to my youngin' the other day, man, he was like, man, his exact words was, man, it's like a third world country up in here, man. I said, go ahead, man. He said, man. He said, man, they keep us on lock. He said, man, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't, um, getting no shower sometime for a week at a time. You know what I'm saying? They ain't letting us do nothing, man. They bringing the commissary around when they want to to the building. We ain't able to go over there and get it. Now, that should tell you something right there that is monetized because all, all is going on, they try to keep that commissary running if possible just because, you know what I'm saying, they, they making money. You know what I'm saying? All the stuff going on where you can't let us out to sell, but you making money, you don't stop the money train. You know what I'm saying? And he's saying sometimes they being on lock and not being able to get showers and the excuse they being given is lack of staff. They ain't got nobody to work. So therefore, if they ain't got nobody to work, you can't even wash your body. You can't even take care of your hygiene, man. And you tell me this ain't, man, this is like third world country, man. They feeding you late. They feeding you cold food. They feeding you rotten food. They feeding you spoiled food. You know what I'm saying? And you have no other uh, choice but to be able to eat it or have some money to get some commissary and eat this junk food. You know what I'm saying? When junk food is a better option than real food, then you already know what time it is. You know what you're dealing with. But, man, and he said, man, when they out, man, he said the dudes is, is like savages, man. It's like when I first came in, man, when you know, in the wall and all of that stuff, man, when they bust them doors open, man, you are literally on your own. You know what I'm saying? What are you willing to do to protect your own? You own your own, man, when them doors open, man. You in there with hundreds of dudes, man, and ain't no police in sight. And if there's hundreds of dudes in there, you can lay flat and believe there's hundreds of Bethlehems up in there. And ain't nobody in there going to be able to protect you but you. You know what I'm saying? And... He was like, man, they 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 robbed they robbed the dude in there recently before they went on lock, and he was like, they hog tied him, hog tied him, robbed him, hog tied him in the cell, gagged him, and stabbed him all up in his buttocks. Yeah, yeah, this is what's going on in there, man. This 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 is normal activity in prison. Believe it or not, it's normal activity. You understand me? And this is where they found dude at. In the cell, hog tied, stabbed all up in the buttocks. Now, you might say, well, why would they stab him in the buttocks? Well, let me educate you, right? <laughs> dudes be stabbing dudes in the buttocks, man, because dudes be trying to, you know, give you a philosophy bag. Yeah, they trying to stab you in the rectum and all in the buttocks to give you a philosophy bag. If you get stabbed up in your in your buttocks, man, you know, if you get hit right, it's going to mess up your, your, you know what I'm saying, whatever you call it, you know what I'm saying? And therefore, they have to reroute, you know, you know, your feces through your side, which, you know, i.e. is a philosophy bag. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't know that for a long time, you know what I'm saying, what, what the... uh. You know what that was about, man, because when I when I first come in and stuff, man, you know, I used to hear about that, you know, dudes beefing with dudes, dudes will run up behind them and try to, you know, stab them up in the buttocks. And I'm saying to myself, like, why wouldn't, you know what I'm saying, dude try to stab you, you know, in your heart or itch in your gut or something to take you out or something? Nah, they trying to stab a dude, you know, up in his rectum. And I'm like, what, you know what I'm saying? And dudes say that, that, that could cost a dude to have a philosophy bag. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, what? You know, and, and at the time, to be honest with you, I didn't even know what, what I knew what, you know, you had a bag on your side, you had to use the rest, but I didn't know the, the technical name of philosophy bag. I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? So, man, that just had me, you know, real, real, like, you know what I'm saying? Like on some super paranoia type stuff because I hear another way, dudes be always looking behind them when you hear footsteps. You know what I'm saying? You on the yard, you might be walking, you hear jogging. You know, dudes gonna turn it, they gonna look because of the simple fact that somebody could be coming up behind you and you don't know what, you know, what their intentions are, what they, you know what I'm saying, what they're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? You could not have no beef with nobody, but somebody could have uh 
some dislike for you. Uh, it could be your seller. He could want to get rid of you. He could pay another dude off to get, you know, to make a move on you outside on the yard or make a move on you on the block just to get you up out of his cell. You know what I'm saying? These are the type of games that's being played up in there, man. So it's crazy, though, man. But, yeah, man, so when he was telling me about they, 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 you know what I'm saying, gagged the dude up and, 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 and hog-tied him and, you know, took all his stuff, you know what I'm saying, and, and took everything, left the cell buck naked, you know what I'm saying, and that's why they hog tied him so he could be laid there and he couldn't call nobody, couldn't do nothing so they can get have enough time to get everything out. And then they, you know, he said they hit him all up in the buttocks and stuff. And he was like, man, I don't know why, you know what I'm saying, why they, and I, and I explained it to him, you know what I'm saying, the reason why they did that, they probably trying to give him a philosophy bag. Now, I don't know what the reason it was why they went in there on him like that, whether he owed him something, whether he had something that they just wanted to take or whatever. But when he told me the part about the stabbing in the, in the backside, I knew what it was about because I had seen it before. You know what I'm saying? I told you, man, in, in 12,365 plus days, man, you, I probably seen it all. You know what I'm saying? That, that goes on in there in one way or another. If I ain't seen it, I was around it or I know about it or I heard about it when it happened and it educated me. You know, that's how you get educated in the penitentiary, by keeping your ears open, your eyes open, and your mouth closed. You understand me? That's how you get educated. That's the only way you're going to learn in prison because it ain't like somebody going to sit there and then take time to give you the whole game because if they sit there and they take time to give you the whole game, they missing something they sell. You know what I'm saying? And dudes got that type of, you know, you know, everybody's every man for himself, man. You know, it's a dog eat dog world. A lot of dudes feel a certain type of way because I had to learn the hard way. You got to learn the hard way too so they don't want to give you that game. I found out since I've been out here, it's the same thing out here with the game. Like the YouTube game, dudes don't want to give you the game. Why? They say you in the same game they in. They had to learn. They had to get in front of us. Ain't like nobody sitting here telling you, look, man, you got to do it like this. You do this like this, man. This is, Ain't nobody did that. Ain't nobody trying to do that because people are concerned with their own. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, to a certain extent, I ain't mad at them. Do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own ways. You know what I'm saying? That's not my way, but that might be somebody else's way. Whatever I learn or figure that I can, you know, give to somebody else to make their struggle lesser or easier, then that's just how, I, that's how I'm living. You know what I'm saying? So, but I don't knock nobody for what they do because what you got is yours. Whether it's your education, whether it's your knowledge, whether it's your money, whether it's your time, it's yours. So whoever you choose to, you know, distribute that to, that's on you. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, man, they 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 vicious in there right now, man. And just by the things that I'm hearing, it's like going back to what it was when I came in. You know what I'm saying? So time is repeating itself in the penitentiary. The penitentiary definitely not getting no better. That's a fact. It's not getting no better. Is only getting worse. And all you youngins is out here now trying to go up in there, man. You have no clue of what you stepping into. You have no knowledge of what you stepping into. And my brother, you will you 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 will be making the biggest mistake of your life or career decision, man, when you out here and you breaking these laws and you doing these things that will get you in penitentiary, man. Because once done, it's not gonna be able to be reversed. You did it's dudes in prison right now that's supposed to have been out years ago, ain't out. It's dudes in prison that was supposed to get out ain't never get that opportunity because they got left up in there. You know what I'm saying? So this is the reason why we make these videos, man, so somebody can get some type of, you know what I'm saying, um, understanding of what's going on on the inside of these walls, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's like I say, my, my brother says a third world country up in there, you know, right here in the United States, just behind those walls, man. You know what I'm saying? All these things is going on, man. Dudes, and fear will be used against you in prison. It will be used against you in prison, man. When you, when dude can scare you, he can take advantage of you in any way possible. If he can scare you. And I'm telling you right now, it's like in prison, dudes can smell it. They can smell the fear on you, man. They can look at you and dissect you regardless of what's coming out your mouth, regardless of your grit, regardless of how tough you talking, regardless of what charge you bought in from the street about how many people you shot, how many people you robbed, how many, what type of gang you was in, who your family is. Who, they ain't fighting at that stuff, man. <laughs> they ain't fighting at it. If they can look through that, man, and they can smell it on you, man, they coming at you, man. It's like, it's like blood in the water with shocks. They know. 
You know what I'm saying? They know you scared. You know what I'm saying? No matter how you, they know. Because they got that experience. They done been around it. They ain't no stranger to danger. They know danger when it's around them. They know who dangerous. You know what I'm saying? They know, man. Because they been in that field, man. They been in there, man. You got dudes been in there 20, 30, 40 years. You ain't fooling them cats. You ain't fooling them cats, man. I don't care what your muscles look like. I don't care how tall you is, short you is. You know, how much you barking out your mouth. You not fooling them C's and vests in prison, man. Because he could be able to look in your eyes and he going to be able to know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of dudes, they can't hide that fear. They ain't never been in them type of situations, you know, regardless of what they locked up for. You know, they may be locked up for murder. They may be locked up for murder, but they ain't never been in them one-on-one -on -one situations, mono and mono, man to man, life or death on the line. They ain't been in those type of situations. So they scared the fears in them. Even though when they was on the street, they moving with no fear because they got the pistol. You know what I'm saying? But in there, you ain't got it. And you ain't got your backup and you ain't got dudes that's going to hold you down. You got you. You got you and your skills and your heart and your will to survive. And a lot of dudes ain't got that in them, man. You know what I'm saying? They don't. They just don't have it in them. You know what I'm saying? It not even realizing that you not having that in you, what you are, the very thing that you're afraid of, of getting hurt or, or, or getting killed or getting taken advantage of, you not realize you put yourself more at risk of that. Of just the same thing that you are afraid of. The same thing that you are afraid to engage about will be the same things that will happen to you by you not engaging. You understand me? And, 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 and people have to figure that out, man. But it's still a hard pill to swallow for some jokers, dog. Yeah, it's still just a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard pill to swallow, man. Because the fear of getting hurt, man, is, is, is omnipresent. You know what I'm saying? Everybody love life. That's why they still living. The fear of losing your life is omnipresent. So if they think that is a possibility, you know what I'm saying? They'll submit. I told y'all before briefly, I believe, man, when I had that Sally, man, I had that Sally, the white dude, man. He was kind of nerdy and everything, man. And he, he he actually went to school, whatever school it was. It was the same school Jason Kidd went to. I told this on one of them joints because he... University of Cali, I think, California, I think. And um it's one of them. I think that's what it might be. Um, but he went to school there, man, and then, you know, and they was coming down here messing with some old girl at uh University of Virginia and got caught up and got locked up and ain't wanted to tell his parents, white dude, his parents was, you know, affluent, had some money or whatever. And he they he locked up, but he only got like a two years or something, something like that. And he don't want to let his parents know because his parents still sending money for him to go to school and they still assuming he in school and they they not even knowing he's somewhere in the penitentiary. So his whole plan is to do his little time in the penitentiary, get back out, get back home, get back in school, and they none be the wise. You understand? So he was scary though. He was scary because he never been in this situation before. He got caught up with some drug stuff and that's what happened with him. But he had recreational drugs, but he got caught with him. You know what I'm saying? So he ended up there, and he ended up in the cell with me. Now, dudes was looking to extort him. Dudes was looking to take advantage of him just off of his demeanor alone. You see what I'm saying? Which, in, on the street, his demeanor is acceptable because of the, 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 the environment that he's in. He's in a college environment. He's a white dude. He's kind of a geek. So his demeanor is accepted, and the penitentiary is misconstrued. Oh, he's soft. Oh, he a girl. Oh, he he could be, you know, taken advantage of. He could be extorted. That's the that's what they're going to get out of him with that. So by him being in the cell with me, he was cool. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not bringing that to my cell. You know what I'm saying? No matter who in the cell with me, you're not vanish taking my cell. You see what I'm saying? So he just landed in a good position. But he the fear was in him. And he used to talk about it and he used to tell me. And man, and I know this may sound cool, and I don't know if I told this part on the other video or not. But you know, we in penitentiary, man. We bored to death. So sometimes I used to, you know, I used to jug with him and laugh and play with him and it'd be like, man, well, you know what I'm saying? You know, what man, what you would do if? You know what I'm saying? What would you do if? And I remember I hit him with the scenario, what he'll do if some dude ran in here. You know, because dudes had already, you know, gave him little indication that they wanted to do something with him that he won't wit. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, you know, might want something from me that he won't willing to give. You know what I'm saying? Or asking for money. And he, he, you know, all of that had, you know, crossed his path, like, you know, suggestively. So, so I'm messing with him this one night and I asked him, what would he do if a dude ran in there with a the knife and asked him for his manhood? You know what I'm saying? And demanded it or told him that he was going to start, you know, poking him. You know what I'm saying? He said he would he he would give it up. And I'm looking at him like, huh? I mean, he said it so cavalier, like, and he was like, well, what else I'm going to do? You said if he come in here, he got the knife and stuff. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Just get stabbed up? Yeah. If that's what you got to do, or you rather get stabbed up the other way. You know what I'm saying? What could happen to you with that knife could be, uh, you know, you could survive that. You know what I'm saying? You can come back from that. You can bounce back from that. You're not going to bounce back from losing your manhood, man. That is gone forever. You know what I'm saying? True indeed. You can lose your life fighting back. You understand me? But you have to understand your environment. Don't nobody really want to take your life. You know what I'm saying? Especially in a circumstance like that because in all essence, he didn't kill two people. He didn't kill you and him because he had never seen the streets again. And or if he survived that, that, you know, ducking that electric shit. So you got to factor all of that in versus what's being presented to you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to explain this stuff to him, but he was so terrified and petrified. And then he got a little upset with me as if because of the question I asked him and his answer, the way I was dwelling on it and speaking to him about it, like he was, he was, he was upset. But like I say, he ain't had no go in him. They'd be like, man, hey, Banky, what you asking me? Oh, he ain't had that in him. You know what I'm saying? Which should have been in him as well. You know what I'm saying? But he basically said he would he would submit before he subject himself to physical harm. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 I'm, and I'm asking him now, which begged me to ask him, like, so you never did anything like that before? You never, you know, engaged? In, and he was like, no. And I'm like, you would do that so easily when presented with a threat opposed to not fighting, or, or you know, fighting back, and, and he was like, "Man, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get stabbed up, man. Well, I want to go home. We all want to go home. <laughs> we all want to go home. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want to go home more than I want my manhood. I don't want to go home more than I want my dignity. You know what I'm saying? So it's the fear factor, man. You know what I'm saying? That will create dudes to do things that they." You know, normally under normal circumstances that they not they wouldn't even consider or it would not even cross their mind. You know what I'm saying? So I can remember when that was happening, man. That was a lesson for me too. That, that you know, because at the same time I'm learning still the frame of mind of man. You know what I'm saying? What what man is capable of? What man you know is not capable of? I'm learning all of this. So that was a that was that was a a, a, a piece that he gave me, not realizing that it stuck with me forever because I realized that people are that paralyzed by fear sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And in life, maybe maybe I should have been. You know what I'm saying? Because my life had been on the line plenty of times in penitentiary. Not to, to you know what I'm saying, to say that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm blessed because I survived. That's how I know I'm blessed. But at the same time, you know, I don't think for me in my situation did, you know what I'm saying, I could have survived any other way besides meeting force with force. You know what I'm saying? And I just always took the the attitude of whatever's gonna happen, gonna happen, you know what I'm saying? But I just won't gonna let nothing happen. You know what I'm saying? If 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 I was, you know what I'm saying, killed or in the process, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? If I was killed in the process, so be it. But that just don't suit everybody, man. Everybody got their own frame of mind. Everybody got their own survival techniques, man. But in prison, man, your fear will be used against you. That's that's a fact. It will be weaponized. It will be used against you, man. And I'm telling you, they can sniff it out. They can sense it. They know it. It's just like you doing everything you do in life at your job or wherever you do on a regular basis. You have an understanding of how things go. You can see it. You know it's, it's instinctual, you know what I'm saying, so, but, you know, like I say, man, it, it, a lot of people, they just can't handle it, man, you know what I'm saying, prison is, is definitely overwhelming, man, it's overwhelming for everybody, but how you handle it is the difference, 
You know what I'm saying? That's the difference. And you have to be willing to, to, to die. You got to be willing to, to go all out. You got to be willing to spend the rest of your life in a place that you don't even want to be in in the first place. You know what I'm saying? In order to maintain the things that you want to maintain. Your dignity, your manhood, your self-respect, your pride, your, you know what I'm saying? Being able to look yourself in the mirror and know who you are. You know what I'm saying? And who you will never be. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't knock nobody for their decisions. They do what works for them, man. I guess he figured that worked for him, man. You know what I'm saying? And 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 fortunately that didn't happen to him. You know what I'm saying? That didn't happen to him. And I can I can <laughs> I can guarantee you he ain't coming back in prison because he got the full experience firsthand. You know what I'm saying? He got the full experience firsthand. You did. And, um, you know, like I say, man, I done seen a lot happen in there, man, to dudes just because they were scared. And if they would have suppressed that fear, you know, you can't never guarantee not getting hurt. That, 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 that's an impossibility. But I believe a lot of dudes went through a lot of things that, you know, knowing the dudes that was pressing them, they could avoid if they just would have stood up. If they just would have manned up, the dude that was pressing them probably would have bagged up. Because a lot of times I've seen situations where the dude that was pressing somebody else had only started doing what had already been done to him. But trying to find somebody weaker than him that he can impose on them what had already been imposed on him. You know what I'm saying? We had all, I know dudes, man, from way back in the day in the wall, man, that was, uh, you know, that was pressed and taken advantage of. And it's been so many years ago now, they do it to young dudes. You know what I'm saying? And they feel like, you know what I'm saying, they, you know, nobody knows. You know what I'm saying? Or they use the fear of the young dudes because they know how afraid they were at the time of what happened to them. You know what I'm saying? But old heads and dudes that was around already know who you are and what you about. But dudes would change their self, man. They would change their self, man. I know dudes that was scared when they came in. It ain't nothing actually happened to them as far as being taken advantage of. But they was terrified, petrified. You know what I'm saying? Running to them a decade later, man. They 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 gangsters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, you know, uh, toting the Bethlehem, screaming on dudes and... You know, robbing and 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 and, and uh, uh, taxing dudes and all of that. You know what I'm saying? They have metamorphosized because prison is gonna have different effects on different people. You know what I'm saying? Different effects on different people. And then, like I said, I told y'all about the B-more situation. How what happened to B-more and what he turned out to be. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes them dudes would take their experiences and then when they got forever in prison or such long sentences in prison, they'll turn around and impose on somebody else what was imposed on them. You know what I'm saying? They'll become what they dislike. You know what I'm saying? Prison is, is just, uh, man, it's just a different type of world, man. It's a different type of world, man. It, it's, um, it's, it's really, really hard to explain, man, and I do my best to try to you know, paint these pictures for y'all, man. But it's really hard to explain, man. That anything can happen at any time. Anything at any time, man. You could be in a a, a a a total calm throughout the whole block, and then in one second, it could turn into pure chaos, pure violence, blood, people getting hurt, screams, yelling, um, running around. I mean, like 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 something that you will see in a movie, just like that. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, a lot of people, they can't handle that, man. And I don't think, to be honest with you, I don't think it was meant to be handled by anyone. You know what I'm saying? No human being should be living in that type of lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? That type of lifestyle, no human being should be living that type of lifestyle, man. This is why I preach, man. Stay free. You know what I'm saying? Understand and, and, and respect the, 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 uh, the, the privilege of freedom. You know what I'm saying? Understand and respect the privilege of freedom why you have it, man. You know what I'm saying? When I'm sitting here having dudes calling me and telling me what's going on in there and I can hear the pain in their voice. I can hear the hunger in their voice of wanting to get out of that situation. You know what I'm saying? When you can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? When you got to set up in a cell with another dude for six, seven, eight days without showering. You know what I'm saying? Without being able to use the phone and call your people at home. You know what I'm saying? You got to uh, listen to another man snore and you got to smell his feces and hear him urinating. Come on, man.
Come on, man. Come on, man. That stuff get old, man. Real, real, real fast. You know what I'm saying? And you can't change it. And then when you get irritated with it and when you get frustrated with it, you realize that you cannot change it, man. Because it's going to be like that tomorrow as well. And the next day. And the next day. And a lot of times dude look down that path, man, and they just get overwhelmed, man. You know what I'm saying? They just get overwhelmed. And a lot of times when I say dudes I see violence, when they first get into prison and you first see that initial uh, uh, clutch of violence, where the Bethlehem is being used and the feet is being used and you heard bone crashing against concrete and you heard bones breaking and you see no mercy, you be like, oh man, you be like the dude Macaulay Culkin of a home alone. You know what I'm saying? You be like, and you be like, you don't want no parts of that. But you have no choice because you in it and you can't get out of it until they open the doors, man. It ain't no way out. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no way out, man. So, yeah, man. But anyway, man, you know, pray for the dudes in there, man. Pray for the soldiers that's thugging it out, man. Pray for the soldiers that's trying to get up out here, man, to get back with their family and the ones that's trying to get it right, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a lot of them in there, man, and I just hope they get that opportunity. I'm blessed to have gotten it myself, and that's why I try to educate and I try to uplift and I try to support the brothers that still left behind, man. So, man, um, Appreciate everybody rocking with me, man. I appreciate the love for sure. Appreciate the support, man. Y'all talk to me in the comments. I talk back. Just wanted to get that up off of my chest. TBP Nation, man, stand up, man. We out here trying to make a difference, man. Trying to put that positive energy in the air. Rock with me, man. We ain't going nowhere, man. We going harder. We going stronger. And we going longer in 2024, man. And it's a blessing, like I say in every lesson. And the blessing is, man... That we trying to educate, we trying to we trying to create a uh, change, man. We trying to create awareness, man. So you know we ain't we ain't uh doing um everything in this world to change the world, but we doing our part. You know what I'm saying? And um that's all you can hope for, man. So God give us the strength to keep on doing that, man. Y'all salute. Talk to me in the comments. I talk back, man. Boom, 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 boom. Duck them hooks, man. And you ain't got to tell me, man. Hey, hey, man. I know I'm getting faster. Boom. Special. Yeah, pure deliciousness. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me. And that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.